From the sea is a vast and vital industry to the men born to the sea, men of the little ships of peace, the family fishermen of the famous fishing quarter of Hastings, the Stay. Sturdy and independent of spirit, these men and their fathers before them have fished from the shores for centuries. Good morning folks and welcome to the David Wilson Out and About YouTube channel. I'm down at Hastings today, I'm just uh, going on a walk about and I'm just going to do a little bit of history of the uh, fishing boats, the cliffs and the cliff lift here. So uh, I'm just going to sort of ad lib and see how it goes to be honest. It's the first day of winter and as you can probably hear and the camera's moving all over the shop, it's blowing an absolute hoolie. But you're going to expect that on the seafront at the end of the day. So without further ado, because I'm worried about the camera falling off the stand, uh, we'll crack on the walk and I'll bring you back in a moment. I'm trying to uh, record with my back to the wind at the moment till I get away from the actual front itself. As I said in the intro, we're on the first day, official day of winter. And I was just gagging to get, get myself out, get myself out and about. I've got a few days off of work before Christmas and uh, I needed some sea air. Well, I've parked in a car park called the Rockanore Car Park. I've done a day ticket, so uh, as I don't know how long I'm going to be down here, so I'm just doing it on the safe side. And we're now walking down along Rockanore towards the fishing sheds. Well, it's certainly a cold old day, even more so because of the wind. And there's your first glimpse of the buildings on the right hand side, which are actually relatively new and are built in. A sympathetic manner to match in with the fishing huts over on the left hand side here. We're just approaching the fishermen's huts now and as you can see more or less directly in front of us is that absolutely amazing one that's in the shape of a boat. I don't know whether it's just been built like that or whether it is a boat cut in half but yeah it looks incredible. I'll just give you a a quick pan around in a minute, although the, it'd be directly into the sun. Well, there's the boat-shaped fishing shed from a different angle. Very quirky. Well, at the moment, we're standing opposite the East Hill lift. Um, it's closed at the moment. It's only open at weekends during the winter. But what I'm going to do, I'm just going to pan up so you can see the actual carriage and the station at the top. It's actually surprisingly busy. It's a, uh, a Thursday, it's quite early morning, but still a fair few sightseers about, which I suppose I am really. Well, I'm, I only live 50 miles away, but uh, there you go. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to walk to the end of these huts and then go down onto the stayed or the shingle beach and then um, 
give you the history and let you view a few of the fishing fleet. I must admit, although it's quite cold, it's a beautiful morning. I know the sun's gonna go in this afternoon, but there's a, it's very, very bright, very low in the sky this morning. And we'll make the most of that. Now straight ahead there, that's the West Cliffs. And providing it's open, we'll be actually going up in the, on the um, railway lift to the top and having a little look around Hastings Castle. I'm just crossing a tiny little level crossing where they've got a uh, miniature railway here. I don't think that'll be running at this time of year, but uh, great fun for the kids and adults alike. Now passing the RNLI lifeboat station. We'll get a better view of that from the Shingle Beach side. It's a lot warmer out of the wind, but uh, we'll be going straight back into that shortly as I veer off left here and go down towards the beach. I'm actually surprised how busy it is down here. Quite a lot of tourists, there's a lot of dog walkers out, but that's, that's to be expected, locals, and at the time of the morning. Oh, beautiful sun, I play havoc with my filming. <laughs> it looks like the lifeboat station's under restoration at the moment we're going to take a closer look lifeboats in and there she is in all her glory beautiful boat so big when it's out of the water my apologies I'm filming directly into the sun at the moment I don't know how my knees are going to handle this shingle, but I'm going to give it a good try. Well, di directly in front now is the bulldozer that actually uh, pushes the boats down, launches the boats off the beach. Uh, when they bring them out, they're towed out on a winch, but um, yeah, on the way out, the bulldozer sort of nudges them all the way down into the water and then uh, comes back and starts all over again. I'm not sure how much of the fleet is out but there's certainly a few still up on the shingle here. Got all the nets to the left. Yeah, I'm struggling to walk a bit. I'm on an angle and the shingle's very thick here. But uh, I'll do my best. Maybe I need to go down a bit lower where the tide's just gone out and the shingle's wet and then I can sort of walk along the flat a bit. I might try that. A famous and unique part of the old town are the net shops. These are tall black wooden sheds which were built to provide a weatherproof store for fishing gear made from natural materials to prevent them from rotting in the wet weather. The stores are tarred and weatherboarded. The sheds were originally built on posts to allow the sea to go underneath. However, more shingle was built up and the sea does not reach under the huts anymore. A common misconception is that the sheds were built for drying the nets, hence the height. This is incorrect, as the nets were dried on the beach and the sheds were built for net storage. The height is due to the limited space and inside the sheds there are always multiple floors. The Stade is a shingle beach. It has been used for beaching boats for more than a thousand years. It is now home to Europe's largest fleet of beach-launched fishing boats. 
These boats must be hauled from the sea after each trip, so they can be no longer than about 10 meters. This means that they can only carry small amounts of gear and travel just a few miles. As a result, the fleet has always fished in an ecologically sound way. The Sea Fishing Industry Authority described the state as near perfect a fishery as could be devised. Another bulldozer directly ahead, so obviously there's several. It would be a bit weird with one, it'd probably take all day to launch. There's, there's going to be quite a few of them. We're in the far distance there on the cliff. Hopefully you can see the cable car. I'm quite a way away from it. All the gulls flying around it and the cable car station at the top. There's two of them. They're actually side by side at the moment, but we can only catch a glimpse of one at the moment. Oh, well, that's been an absolute killer on my knees getting down here, but you can't come to the seaside without coming down to the water's edge. Simple as. Right, we'd better fight our way back up the shingle. It's going to be tough on my knees, so I may have to sit down for five minutes after this let the aches wear off actually I didn't do too bad to be honest quite impressed with that I just powered my way up Right, we're now continuing into further into the old town. We're going to go up, uh, I think it's George Street. And it's a quirky street, so what I'll do, I'll just sort of walk along there and uh, probably put it to some music until we get to West Lift. Now, there's a pub I've spent many a happy hour in having a pint over the years. Not even sure if it's open anymore. We're just approaching George Street, going past the Blue Dolphin fish bar. I haven't been down here for a few years, but it's bringing back some lovely memories. Yeah, it's sort of a bit funny, like, you can't even see her face, but she's just like, ah. 
Here we are, we're at the West Hill lift. So uh, yeah, I think it's open, so I'm gonna go inside and uh, get up to the top of the cliff. Oh, get the bag through. All right, cheers for that, mate. Construction of the line started in 1889 by the Hastings Lift Company. The line met with local opposition, which meant that the work took longer to complete than originally envisaged, and construction costs were over 50% higher than envisaged. The line finally opened in 1891 and was originally powered by a gas engine. The first operator went bankrupt in 1894, probably as a result of the construction delays and cost overruns. The Hastings Passenger Lift Company took over and operated the line until 1947, when Hastings Borough Council bought the line. It was converted from a water balance system to electric operation in 1971. To mark the railway centenary year, the line was fully refurbished in 1991. The West Hill Lift is complemented by the East Hill Cliff Lift, giving visitors access to Hastings Country Park. The East Hill Clift Railway is now the steepest funicular railway in the United Kingdom. Well, it's fairly blowy up the top here. As you can probably hear, it's quite busy. Nothing's open, no calf, no toilets. It's just views, but uh, that suits me. Some spectacular views from the top here. There's the view over the, uh, you probably see it in the distance, the East Hill lift. And I'm just panning out to sea. There's a lovely view over the town and the fishing beach. Well, it's quietened down a bit up here now. Um, I came up with quite a crowd in the carriage, but they've all sort of dispersed, so it's very peaceful. So what I'm doing really, I'm just chasing views. Like I said, nothing's open, so that's just the way it goes. It's in the winter, that's what we've got to expect. And in all fairness, as if you're a regular to my channel, you know, I don't do crowds, so I'm unlikely to come out when there's hordes of people about and I don't like filming I keep getting stared at like I've got two heads I know some people don't worry about it but it puts me off and I don't enjoy myself oh, 
we're approaching the castle, but I just want to go and see the view first. Excuse the wind noise. I'm trying to cover the mic as best I can when I'm facing into the wind. Caution, cliff edge. No shit, Sherlock. Right, well, we'll go and have a quick browse around the castle. I'm raising my voice now because the wind's blowing directly into the mic. And uh, I'll give you just a very brief bit of history on it. Hastings Castle is a keep and bailey castle ruin situated high above the town. It overlooks the English Channel into which parts of the castle have fallen over the years. Well, even the castle ruins are closed, but uh, I expected that. And that's about as near as you can get. You can go up to the gate, but you can see less from the actual main gate than you can here. Maybe another trip. I think I've been on the East Lift, the one that's closed today. I think I've been on that once in all the years I've been coming to Hastings, and I've been coming here for the best part of 40 years on and off. I was much younger, I call it foolish now, and I used to basically climb the steps, just uh, run up the steps. I was talking to the lift operator and he was saying, yeah, it's crazy when you're young, but uh, you know, it was fun at the time. I wish I could do it these days. That's not gonna happen anymore. Oh, well, I'm having a five minute sit down and a cup of coffee. I'm glad I brought the coffee up with me now because I was hoping the cafe would be open, but I was going to grab a bite to eat. But uh, at least I got some coffee. I'm, I'm probably going to have fish and chips. I'm by the seaside. It's the thing you do. But it's nice to actually give my legs a rest. They're doing okay, considering I've been walking along shingle beaches, and which is not easy walking uphill. But um, I knew there wouldn't be a lot open, and I'm not disappointed. I actually like it like this personally. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to drink my coffee get the lift back down and I'll bring you back then. Oh, well, that was fun, even though there was nothing open up there. Well, what we're going to do now is just uh, cross over this busy road and then take a little walk along the prom towards the Hastings New Town. Well, there's quite a few people down here visiting. There's quite a few people playing crazy golf. Let's have a look. Not one of my sports. <laughs> there still seems to be plenty of the arcades open along the seafront. But the children, I think a lot of the children are on holiday. I think in my area they break up today, but in other areas they may have broken up sooner, so they may be just trying to cash in on a last minute Christmas haul of pennies. Now here's a place worth a mention. I'm just gonna take a, a pan of it and then take a walk over. See if we can just walk up to the main entrance and give you a little bit of history on it.
Pelham Place was designed by architect Joseph Kay in 1824 to 1828 and built for Sir Thomas Pelham as housing. It was a continuation of Pelham Crescent, which was built into the sandstone cliffs facing the sea. A battery of cannons once stood along the beach in front of the building, but was dismantled in 1817, two years after the Napoleonic War ended. Well folks, that just about concludes our little tour of the old town, my little walkabout. I did walk up to the pier, unfortunately the pier's closed, so there was no point in filming, it's just a gate. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take a beach walk back down towards the, uh, the fishing sheds, um, pick up some fish and chips, I'm not going to film that, have them, and then I'm going to get my camera out and come back out and start taking some snaps. So I, I hope you've enjoyed this video. Um, this will probably be my last video before Christmas, so all that leaves me to say is uh, thank you to all my subscribers. If you're new to the channel, thank you for visiting and please consider subscribing. And may I wish you all a Merry Christmas and a stress-free new 2004. Bye for now.